Hey guys, how's it going? Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I wasn't able to upload two videos last night, but uh, I'm getting them uploaded now. Um, one of them has got some pretty good statistics on the rapture and what people believe. And uh, it, it was actually kind of surprising. I didn't realize the numbers went that direction. I thought they went the other way. But those numbers prove what Jesus said when he said there is a remnant and when you look at who actually believes in the rapture and pre-trib rapture and see how low the numbers are in that video it's kind of surprising <coughs> but um today and I had to move to the water closet because uh, my wife is sleeping she's recovering from her surgery I don't want to disturb her but I had to put this video out because I was on um, a video earlier and I'm not going to point out whose video it was because it doesn't matter. What matters is that we get the point across. And uh, I've done a couple of videos on this already. There's still a lot of arguing about little things in the Bible. Um, people getting um, into heated discussions. And th the biggest problem is they're talking down about other Christians who don't see this or see it a different way than them. And these are little points. They're, they're small things that don't in the grand scheme of things don't matter but people are still trying to start arguments over them um, especially when they're being nasty to another one of the brothers so I wanted to point out some scriptures and I commented in one video and put the link to the scriptures up uh, the way I do searches for them so people can read them because uh, we need reminders every now and then and that's why there's so much in the Bible of how we should interact with each other, how we should conduct ourselves and conduct business with each other, and how we should act. Because it's real easy for our human nature to kick in and go out there and tell somebody, well, you're stupid, you don't know what you're talking about, you're wrong, this is the way I see it, when very, there's a very high possibility we could be wrong in how we see it. Um, and I say that about myself. You know, what Anything I put out here, I could be wrong in my interpretation, but I'll tell you when it's my opinion, and I, I'll tell you when it's just Scripture. So, this video, I'm just going to read scripture. That's it. I'm not going to give my opinion because the scriptures that I'm about to read speak for themselves. And this all pertains to how we conduct ourselves and, and about the arguing and the, and the getting into these heated discussions where there's a lot of negative stuff thrown out to other people, towards other people, because of the way they believe. So, uh, we're going to start in James 4.17. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it it is sin for them now, as I read these just see if they speak to you and by all means if you have a piece of paper and a pencil write them down you can go look at them yourself or you can google uh, Bible verses about arguing and it'll bring up the same ones uh, 1 John <coughs> 1 John 3.18 Dear children let us not love with words or speech, but with actions in, and in truth. Psalm 7, 11. God is a righteous judge, a God who displays his wrath every day. Psalm 4, 4. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Proverbs 15, 18. A hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but the one who is patient calms a quarrel. Proverbs 16.32 Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. Proverbs 23 It is to one's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. Proverbs 29.22 An angry person stirs up conflict, and a hot-tempered person commits many sins. Ecclesiastes 7.9 do not be quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the lap of fools. 2 Timothy 2, 23-24 Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Colossians 3.21 Fathers, do not embitter your children, for they will become discouraged. Matthew 5.22 But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. 
Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. I'm going to read that one one more time. Matthew 5.22 But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, you can go look that up, it's R-A-C-A, go look up what that means, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Proverbs 30.33 For as churning cream produces butter, and as twisting the noses, and as twisting the nose produces blood, so stirring up anger produces strife. Proverbs 21.19 Better to live in a desert than with a quarrelsome and nagging wife. You see the recurring theme here? Stay away from arguments. Stay away from discussions that are leading nowhere or leading to negativity. Colossians 3.7-9 You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices. Philippians 2, 14-16 Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault, in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky, as you hold firmly to the word of life, and then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. Proverbs 19.13 A foolish child is a father's ruin, and a quarrelsome wife is like a constant dripping of a leaky roof. Proverbs 25.24 Better to live on a corner of the roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. And lastly, Proverbs 13.10, where there is strife, there is pride, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. So, you can see the, th the theme in those scriptures, and there's lots more other than those. That's just the ones I found in that specific search, uh, but there's plenty of others you can dig up. Uh, that's why I recommend you take that, take that and read it in context. Read the other scriptures on either end of it. So, when you guys see somebody that says something, and you got to judge it and look and see if it's actually something, and this is my opinion I'm putting out here, This is it, see if it's actually something worth getting into a discussion about. If it's not really a salvation issue, there really is no discussion. Now, I, I've been putting out a lot of things about um, repenting after being saved. I put out s several videos about this already, and I've put out all the scriptures that pertain to this on each one of those videos. But, I don't want to start any arguments on this, because it's not a salvation issue. You can read in the Bible, when you're, in the scriptures I've shown, when you're saved, you're saved. That's it. You have access to the throne room of God. My point I'm trying to show is that how much better can you be if you turn away from your sins? Now, I see a lot of people that will say, well, I've changed my mind on sin. Okay, well, what does that mean, that you changed your mind on sin? Have you changed your mind that, well, now that I'm in God, I can sin, and it's okay, and He forgives me for it? Or have you changed your mind of, you know what, I see what this sin is, and I need to turn away from it, because this is a, doesn't make God happy? You can tell yourself whatever you want. You can put out, you know, read whatever you want into the Scripture. But the Scriptures are very basic and clear. Don't look for the hidden meaning. Look for the meaning, the meaning right up on top. And that is, when you become saved, it is your duty as a Christian to... It's turn away from sin, walk after the Lord, and do good works that honor Him. This, it's in the Scripture. Go Google it. You'll see for yourself. I, I never tell you guys anything that isn't from the Bible. But if you're telling yourself, okay, well, I'm good now. I'm saved. I don't have to worry about doing anything else. Well, true to a point, but you're saved for good works. You're saved to do good works to other people. Not that those works are going to save you, but... Being saved is just one level. The good works, teaching, preaching, spreading the gospel, these all these things add to you. Now, if you're happy being on the bottom of the ladder, great. Be happy being on the bottom of the ladder. 
But don't be surprised when you stand before him when he gives you dirty looks and tells you, hey, I brought you into this for this and I led you over to this and you didn't do any of it. This is what I, I had, had expected of you and you turned away from all of it. While you can come here, I don't know, I'm not Jesus, I can't tell you what it is. All I can tell you is what the Word says. And the Word says, if you continue to sin after you're saved, you're in danger of this, 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 this. There's a list of stuff. But don't believe me. Read the Scriptures. Get into them. Find out for yourself. I just gave you a bunch of Scriptures. Go back in the video and write them down when I put them out and go read them for yourself. Because it is important that as you grow as a Christian, you don't stay a babe being fed milk. And that is, I'm saved, I'm good. Well, in the beginning, that's great. But as you grow, as you, you work your way up and become bolder and stronger, and He starts giving you more gifts, the Holy Spirit does, that's when you have to start learning about, okay, well, now there's a new way I need to conduct myself. I can't be saved and go right back down to the bar and drink and run around with women and party and have a good old time. That's not what the Lord expects of you. He expects you to start getting rid of those things in your life and start calming down and getting yourself to a point where He can teach you, prepare you, and get you ready to go out into the world and teach His Word. Ultimately, that's the goal. We all basically become apostles. Not in the sense of how the Twelve Apostles did, but an apostle of Christ or a follower or servant of Christ in the world. And then when we get up in, up to, the, to heaven, we're chosen for specific duties and jobs up there too. So, read the scriptures, guys. Get into them. They will speak to you on your level. And if you read a scripture you don't understand, move on. Then come back to it later on and read it again. And all of a sudden, like that, it'll, it'll speak to you and it'll open up to you. The Bible right now is coming alive more than ever. Uh, I was digging in the scriptures today and uh, some new thing I'm, I'm trying out is I take today's date and I go through each book of the Bible and look for that scripture. Like today is 3.14.19. So I take 3.14, I go into every book and go to chapter 3, verse 14 and read them and see if it applies to anything today. And um, I forget what book it was in, I have to go back and look. But one of them showed uh, when the Golden Heights were given to one of the tribes. And the U.S. just told Israel that the Golden Heights plus a couple other places are their territory now, it belongs to them, it's their land. So. The Bible is alive, and you can go through and you can find all these scriptures, and they just wake up to you, especially as you grow. Because think about this, and think of it this way. Hopefully you guys stuck in and watched to the end. I want you to think about it this way. If you just get saved, and that's all you do, you don't do no works, you don't go to church, you don't help nobody, you don't nothing. You still live the same life you're doing. How can Jesus use you to bless others and to help others if you're not doing what he told you to do. Because just getting saved is like getting in the car. But you got in the car with no keys, no driver's license, no shoes, no clothes. You're just sitting in a car. As you grow, you learn to get dressed and wear clothes when you get in the car. Then you learn to get your shoes and put your shoes on and get in the car. Then you get up far enough, you get the keys to the car. Then you can start the car and drive it and go out and do all the things that Jesus wants you to do. Not everybody may understand that analogy, I don't know, but the point of all this is read the scripture. Get into those scriptures. Don't give up on something because you don't understand it. And for crying out loud, don't argue about scripture. It's just not worth it because you can actually push somebody away by getting into nasty discussions or getting into discussions telling them they're dumb about scriptures. Um, there's nothing wrong with discussing them but arguing it, that's bad business I just read you the scripture that, that tells you about it You know, it just, it just causes problems to argue the scripture especially if you're telling somebody else they're wrong none of us have the right to tell anyone else they're wrong about how they interpret a scripture because the scripture speaks differently to all of us so I hope this video blessed you I hope all my videos bless you I hope somebody gets something out of them please share them if you want to share them with anybody because my goal is, is at least one seed that I plant will grow. And if you can use one of these videos and you can get a seed planted and it grows, that, that counts to you. 
counts good to you that you led somebody. So be blessed in Jesus' name. Um, today is a beautiful day outside. I know a lot of other people are having bad weather, but take advantage of every day you can because you never know when it's going to be our last and we're taking off or the tribulation is going to start and you're stuck here dealing with all that mess. So get right with the Lord. Search your heart. Search the scriptures. Talk to him. Talk to him constantly and let him know I'm ready. Teach me. Show me. And he will pour it upon you and wake you up and show you everything. I promise you. It happened to me. It happens to a lot of people I know. So be blessed. And if I don't see you on the next video, I will see you in the clouds.